Okay, I'm getting ready to uh, cut a little sample piece here. We'll see how well this thing cuts. I don't really have this thing set up for, uh, you know, with a good clamping system. So what I did, I just took a piece of three-quarter MDF, this old scrap piece that I'm going to use as my uh, spoiler board or, or sacrificial piece underneath. This piece is just another scrap piece of some three-quarter plywood that I had laying around. And since I don't have a good clamping system, what I did is I just clamped the MDF to the table so it won't move. And I used double-sided tape and uh, glued your, stuck this down with double-sided tape. And I don't really like to use double-sided tape. I don't trust it, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully it will hold up. I'm going to try to cut something right in the middle of this piece here. But I also wanted to show you uh, the way I've set this machine up. And I hope I'm not in the, in the way here where you can see. But the way I've set this up is I've set the long axis here to be the X axis. And this axis here to be the Y axis and then of course the Z. And the way I've set up Mach 3 is to make it easy so that if I was over here where I should be standing, notice if I push this right arrow key, the X axis moves to the right. If I push the left arrow key, it moves to the, to the left. If I push this uh, up key, the Y axis moves away from me. If I push this key pointing towards me, it comes back towards me. And then the Z axis is really easy because it's simply page up to make it go up, page down to make it go down. So if you get your uh, your key set up that way and get it where it's, you know, try to get your computer where you're always, you know, your, your keyboard is on the side that you're going to be, uh, you know, running your XY coordinates from, it really makes it easy so that you don't screw up. I was doing it over there and since this one's a little different than my other C, uh, CNC, I was having a little trouble. I hit the wrong button uh, at once. Okay, another thing I want to show you is I'm going to show you how to zero out this machine. And I'm going to use these blocks as an example because if you don't learn anything else today watching this video, learn this because this is probably the number one mistake that newbies will make when they're trying to set up the machine. I'm going to jog this thing right over here. Okay. So I'm going to set this thing up. Now let's say I had a piece of material that was this thick. And this is where I want to zero it out. Well, the way you do this is you would bring it over your point where you want to start on your material. And notice I've got some play there. I just bring the z-axis down close. And then I hit reference all home, which is going to put zeros in all the x, y, and z on the controller. Then what I do is I cut off the controller because that unlocks the motors where now I can spin them. And this is why I like to have a, a knob on the, on the top of this. But what you can do is you can spin this down. And I usually use a piece of paper like so and you get it just to where the paper won't move and that way you know your your zero point is right at the top now here's the mistake that most new people will make they'll go to jog this back up so they'll come over here and they'll hit page up and they go oh it's not moving I forgot to turn it on so without setting the zero again they'll reach over here turn this on then they'll page it up some more, but guess what? That machine now thinks that the zero is up here. So when you try to go, the first thing it's going to do is plunge down into this material and really mess it up. So you know, it'll be lucky if you don't break off a bit or something. It just depends on how much you move it up. So if you should make that mistake, you know, let's go do this again. When you turn this off and you bring this down, And you touch it off like so. Okay, there's my zero. Now I come over here and I hit reference all home. To make sure I've turned them all to zero. Now once I've done that, before I go to hit that button, the page up to raise it up, you have to turn your controller back on. So now the controller's back on. The computer thinks it's all at zero. The machine is all at zero. Then when you hit page up, 
you're ready to go. So when you start off, it's not going to take off and plunge deep into that material because you're, it thinks your zero is down here now instead of, uh, you know, where it was on top of the material. So if you don't learn anything else today from this video, learn that because that is really one of the most common mistakes. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a little program here. I'm actually going to run the program to make another one of these uh, router mount blocks. But uh, what I like to do is I like to take my tape measure and a pencil. I know that the blank that I need is 7 by 5, and this blank is way big enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to put a mark right here in the center of this material. I'm at 15 and a half, so half of that's what, seven and three quarters, something like that. And I just put a little mark there. And you don't have to be really super precise about this because you're just trying to get it close. I know that because my program is starting at the zero, is in the middle of the material, as long as my piece is plenty big enough, I'm just going to have a skeleton. You know, it may be thicker on one side and the other. If I don't get it exactly the same, it doesn't really matter. The main thing is you don't get outside. Uh, you know, when you're close enough to where it will work. Okay, so I'm going to pull this up. Again, I keep hitting the wrong buttons because I'm not used to this thing on the side here. So I'm just going to pull this down close. Oops. Okay, and you can see I've got it when I kind of eyeball it. I've got it pretty close. That's pretty close to center, and I've got a little gap there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit reference all home, which turns that all into zeros. Then I'm going to take a piece of paper, and I'm going to turn the controller off to free up the motor. You can hear the motor unlock as I, as I, as I turn that off. And then all I'm wanting to do is to basically get that to where it's just starting to grab that paper. Okay, so it's just starting to grab it. So now, what I want to do is make sure I turn the controller back on, power it back up, everything, check my things, everything's still at zero. Now I can hit page up, pull my paper out, and I can come back here and hit go to Z. And I can double check and I go, yep, I'm exactly where I want to be. I'm at X0, Y0, Z0. So everything is right in the middle of that machine. And what I'm going to do is before I turn the router on, I'm going to page this uh, page up a little bit to raise the Z up because I don't want to start it and you know start the router with it right there on the material. And I guess the other thing I have to do is plug that router in. Do not have that plugged in. Okay. Hey, Rocky boy. All right, so now I'm ready to go. So I'm going to turn my router on and hit cycle start, and we'll watch this thing cut. And hopefully that uh, double-sided tape will hold up.
Okay. The actual cutting time for that was 11 minutes and 52 seconds. Uh, it peck drilled these four holes. It actually peck drilled these six, but I had it go into a depth of uh, 7 16 so that once I finish milling this pocket of three quarter, or I'm, I'm sorry, three eighths, um, three eighths deep, this dado, there would be just a little bit of a mark just basically to mark the whole location. So let's see now if I can get this thing. Yeah, this, uh, this double-sided tape holds better than I thought. I know you can see I put the little tab. You may have seen the, the router going into a spot and it kind of up and over and down. That's what it was doing was putting these tabs in there. So I can break these tabs off. Normally what I do is take this to the bandsaw and saw them off flush. But there's our little part. See? Now that was a, a hole that was already in here. so. It looks like a screw hole of some kind. Uh, but anyway, that's the same basic little part here that, uh, that I made earlier today. So the machine cuts really well. I'm also impressed with this double-sided tape. Worked probably better than I thought it would. I was expecting it to go about halfway through and then take off and go sailing, but fortunately that didn't happen. So... Anyway, I guess that's probably going to do it for this video. Uh, if you've got any questions or anything else, you know, like I said, leave them in the comments. We'll, uh, we'll address those as, uh, as y'all put them in there. And uh, really happy with the way this thing's turning out, especially since my improvements. It seems really solid. Uh, you know, cuts nice and straight. Looks like everything's square. Uh, you know, cuts just as good as my other one looks like, so... Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, please do. And, uh, you know, if you like what you're seeing, please click the like button down there. And I guess that, like I said, I guess that'll do it for this one. And we'll catch you next time. Thank you.